p 170 size 12. Thread I'm going to be using is black. Now we simply start the thread at the eye. I put down a nice layer of thread all the way along the shank until just before the barb remove the waist piece and then I turn to tidy up. Now for the for the tail and for the, the, the hackle itself I'm using a natural black hen. This is a kind of deep or dark grey colour so take a few fibres off for the tail. Looking at least the, sh the shank length. Uh, single turn, what I normally do is the ends, the waist ends, slightly towards myself, come over a turn of thread onto the bare hook, and then using that turn to lift or put the fibres on top, and then I come in with a turn again going down, just to lock it in, just to see. That's all you need, don't need any more than that. I'm going to trim it the full length of the body, that's my measure. Make sure I get them all. Yep. Now the body could be either grey dubbin or something like that, but what I'm going to use here is a peacock quill, natural quill. I've then stripped a fine hair all off it using some bleach. So it leaves a nice well marked quill. Just remove one. I do at times get a wee bit brittle, so you want to be careful. Now, I want a slight taper in the body, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie it in at the finer at the, towards the tip, so I've got a tapered sort of segment as it goes up. And then, just be careful when you're winding up that the thread turns are touching. Just form a nice, smooth body for you to wind the quill up. Now, you Years ago, I would just wind the quill over some fine varnish or even some super glue. But in this case, I'm going to basically coat the body with some a fine UV resin, and then bring your quill up. Be nice and light with it. Don't be too heavy. Just the resin will hold the the quill, and you want one turn in front of the other. Just work, you know, work your way up. Just take your time. If you're getting a bit short, just press your finger onto the quill like this. So you can get the quill and carry on up. Just take your time. Take about maybe a mill and a half from the eye. Two or three turns will secure it and then trim away. I'm going to put a wee tiny bit of wax on my thread here. Let's put down a nice layer of thread just to tie in my hackle on my wing. And as I say, I'm going to use a, a light resin, UV resin, and I'm going to apply it using my dubbing needle. Nice and fine, don't put too heavy or too much on. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, spread it in a way that I get a taper. So what I'm doing is just retain my vise as I go, spreading it towards the top. So it's nice and thin down here, slightly heavy at the top of the body. So you drop more here. The good thing about these resins is that you can Take your time, get the shape that you like, make sure everything's coated. See how that looks. It's fine. Let's come in with the dots. Now I like to coat the bodies with a fine coat of varnish just to finish them off. But in this case, I'm just going to leave that so I can finish the fly because I don't have time. So, there we go. There should be plenty. I always give it a wee bit longer with the torch. It's just, I'm just making sure it's set. Now for the wing, I'm just going to use, use quite a few things. You can use Starling, you can use uh, Mallard, Teal Wings, you can even use Crow which is very good, nice dark black. 
In this case I'm using, this is moor hen. These are the primary feathers. And I've got a right and a left, so I need one for either side. Just use my, what I usually do is use my needle. Just bring that out. And then you can tear it off or you can cut it away. So you need one from either side. Now, <coughs> the natural curve of this feather is like a dry fly fibre, I mean, and it's curving away from itself. You can have it coming in, and you have the lighter part of the wing, but I want the dark part. If you look at the wing itself, it's quite dark at the, that's the front. And you see the, the back, it's much lighter. So I want the dark side out, so the, you're going to have a slightly different shape, it's just going to sit out, and it makes for a great wing, this. And uh, you'll find a lot of traditional flies are tied with this type of wing. And as you can see, I should have said that I'm tying the wing on before the hackle. Because I want to finish off with the hackle. Which I think suits a lot of other patterns more. So anyway, length. You let the tips in about halfway into the tail. Just hold it and get it right on top of the shank. Hold it with your finger and thumb. And then you're going to pinch and loop, basically forming a, a loop within your fingers. So bring the thread up, take it thread into your fingers and pinch it. Form that loop in your fingers by taking the thread over your side and over the wing. And then you allow the loop to pull through down towards the shank. And then you do the same again. I'll do that again. And then a couple to make sure it's not going to move. Hopefully you've got a nice wing sitting. Now I'm just going to separate these wings. They'll just come together slightly. You'll see how it sits. It sits apart. Because the curves are away from it. It's checking the length at this point. It's a nice soft wing. Uh, and I like to have a nice this type of wing on a, on a wet fly. Especially in further river. Now once you're happy, trim away the waist and wind your thread towards the eye and back up. Now as I said, I'm going to use just a natural hen, natural black. I'm going to tie this in by the tip. A fibre length you're looking. Depends. I like it reasonably long. I don't want them too short. Um, and at least towards point and bar by the hook. Now what I'm going to do here is just quite a thick stem on this feather, so I'm not going to fold it back. I'm just going to cut away the point, and then basically taper the cut of the fibres so I've got grip. Offer it to the side with the good side of the feather towards myself. A bit of wax onto the thread, make sure it's getting tied in. And then, just one turn in front of the other. Just take your time. Now if I fly this size, I don't mind a good two or three turns. And that's plenty. Now the way I tie off a hackle is to basically bring the hackle stem up, straight up. Bring the thread up right in the side. And then put a 90 degree bend, forcing out the hackle fibres, as you can see there. And get the turn the hackle right in there, and I'll get a neat and tight finish. Trim away the base. It's a couple there to hold. And then tidy up with your thread. Keeping hold of the thread, always keeping it nice and tight. Come in and put finish. see how it looks. Now once this is cast it's not going to be like this, it's going to be messed up but what you're going to get is a, a wing that moves well, it's got a bit of movement in it because it's curving away from the hook shank as you can see there and for all that is it does move a bit and then 
Come on in. Go to Varnish. All the way around. A couple of coats would make a nice, nice. shiny head. Autumn type. Wet fly. Ideal for both locks and... But originally what I used it for was in the river. Mm -hmm.